They found dark matter in our galactic neighborhood, a big clump of it. If that turns out to be correct, that'd be amazing. It could finally move us forward in figuring out just what's going on in the universe. I've had a look at the paper. Dark matter supposedly makes up 80% of all matter in the universe, but that's only on the average. If you believe the models, then dark matter isn't evenly distributed. There's more of it inside and around of galaxies. This dark matter encompasses galaxies in a big cloud that's called a halo. In particular, our home galaxy, the Milky Way, has more than 10 times as much dark matter than normal matter, or so we think. Theoretically, the dark stuff is all around us and passes through us as we speak. This is why physicists have been building dark matter detectors since the 1980s to catch some of the hypothetical particles. So far, they've been unsuccessful. But many of the models also predict that dark matter isn't totally evenly distributed. It should have clumps even within galaxies. These are usually referred to as subhalos. The new work now says they found such a subhalo about 3,000 light years away from us. So this is within our galaxy and in cosmological terms that's basically next door. It has an over density of about 10 to 100 times that of the entire halo at least. It's difficult to say because they don't know the exact size. They did this with a new method that's quite clever. They used radio signals from binary pulsars. A pulsar is a rotating neutron star that emits a beam of electromagnetic waves in the radio range as it rotates. We can detect this beam if it points into our direction. These pulses are extremely regular and they make very nice natural clocks. That it's a binary system now means that the pulsar has a companion, a black hole or white dwarf maybe, and the two have an orbital period. Because the two are orbiting around each other, the pulsar pulses have a regular modulation. The thing is now that this modulation changes as the system moves towards or away from us due to the Doppler effect. All this is a complicated way of saying that they can infer very precisely which direction the pulsar systems are accelerating and from that they infer how much mass is present near the pulsars. They track 27 of them and to make a long story short they find that a bunch of them are attracted towards nothing in particular. There's nothing there that we can see in any part of the electromagnetic spectrum. But the gravitational pull is that of about 10 million solar masses. They think this is a dark matter subhalo. On a sky map, it's roughly in the constellation of Hercules somewhere here. How do they know that it's not a black hole? They don't. Actually, they say that the data are also nicely fitted by a black hole. This is because they can't tell how big the thing is. However, if it was a black hole, you'd expect it to be surrounded by hot gas or some other hot matter, and they don't see anything like that. So they say it'd have to be a primordial black hole which personally I'd find even more amazing than a dark matter subhalo. Like, hello, until two years ago, primordial black holes were a super fringe idea, and now we might have one sitting 3,000 light years down the road? The other thing that's noteworthy about the paper is that the significance of the signal strongly depends on one particular pulsar that has been moving a lot. If one removes this one pulsar from the analysis, then the signal is no longer statistically significant. This is generally not good. It doesn't mean that the signal isn't there, but it means that the signal isn't terribly reliable. If there's anything off with the analysis of this one particular pulsar, the entire detection falls apart. Data Jenga, basically. Okay, but let's assume that this really is a dark matter subhalo and that this detection is confirmed. What would it mean? It'd speak strongly against many dark matter candidates that are made of particles with small masses or those which have no self-interaction because those can't do sufficient clumping. It'd also, for all I can tell, be basically impossible to explain with modified gravity. So if this detection is confirmed, this would be really big. Then again, that I put so much weight on this one pulsar isn't good. So on the bullshit meter, I give it a 5 out of 10. 
It's a great idea to do this kind of analysis, but I'm extremely skeptical that the result will hold up. But I now have a theory that there's a subhalo of dark matter under our couch. If you enjoy science that's skeptical, sharp, and grounded in reality, you should check out Brian Keating's channel, Into the Impossible. Brian is a professor of physics and astronomy, and he's hosted conversations with 22 Nobel Prize winners, along with thinkers like David Deutsch, Sam Harris, Freeman Dyson, Eric Weinstein, and Elon Musk, even me. On his channel, you find cutting-edge cosmology, physics, and technology on a level that's understandable for everyone. Honestly, I think that Brian's podcast is underrated. He has a lot of great content there. If long podcasts aren't your thing, Brian also has short explainer videos similar to the ones I make, but from him, you'll get the point of view of an experimentalist. This is why I'm subscribed to Brian's channel. You have to watch out what those experimentalists are up to. More seriously, check out Brian's channel and subscribe. You won't regret it. And it'll give you a break from the same old Sabina. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.